is recognized. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Just on behalf of a bunch of folks in Montana, listen to Jelly Roll a lot, including myself. Uh, welcome to the swamp here in D.C. We're glad to have you here. But I prefer listening to you on my pickup back in Montana, Jelly Roll. So I, but I'm very proud of what you are doing as a role model and the message you have right now. People will listen to you. They won't listen to people who wear ties. Thank you. Uh, over the past year, I've had the opportunity to meet with folks across Montana, everywhere else to discuss the ongoing fentanyl crisis that is wreaking havoc in our communities. I met with law enforcement, public health officials, tribal leaders, border patrol agents, others. They're all saying the same thing. This fentanyl that's flooding across our southern border is reaching our communities in record time in killing Americans at a horrific rate. We don't have the numbers yet for 23, 2023 for Montana finalized, but our Montana drug task forces were on track to seize nearly a half a million dosage units of fentanyl. That's double, double last year's record shattering seizures. This is not just about urban areas. It's not just about states that are close to the southern border. Montana is a northern border state. We border Canada, but we have a southern border crisis. As we've seen the CBP numbers in fiscal 23, they seized enough fentanyl at the southern border to kill the entire population of the United States. These are sobering numbers, and we, and with Jelly Roll's public advocacy and help just letting people know you don't die from an overdose, you do it from poisoning on fentanyl, the smallest amounts. And you think, well, a packet of sweet and low and think of if that were fentanyl is enough to kill 500 people. One of these Montanans whose life was tragically cut short was Riley Schraps, Butte, Montana. It's one more of the tragic stories. He passed away after taking a pill that was laced with fentanyl. Last year, I had the honor of bringing Riley's dad. I brought him, Riley's dad's name's Tom, to be my guest to the President's State of the Union Address. Tragically, Riley's story is becoming more and more common as fentanyl continues to infiltrate every corner of every community in America. I'll continue to work with my colleagues in the Senate to clean up this, in many ways, it's a man-made crisis it's a crisis that starts at the southern border. It starts in Mexico. It starts with the precursors in China as well and stem the flow of fentanyl in this country so that no more families, no more Montana families have to grieve the loss of a loved one to this drug. Mr. Yo's, in your opinion, has the crisis of the southern border made the job of law enforcement officers harder as it relates to illicit cr drugs and crime? I think any time you have a, uh, a system where where the uh, demand is outpacing the resources, it's always going to be a challenge. And I think we're there, we clearly are. Um, I know that there is uh, some, some really strong discussion here uh, in the Senate about a solution to the border, and I'm really looking forward to, to being part of that and, and, and learning more of it and being part of that solution. Something we, we, need, to, we need to recognize that there is damage being done here. Thank you. Mr. Urban, um, have Mexican drug cartels taken advantage of the crisis of the southern border to elicit and traffic, to, to traffic these illicit drugs in the United States? Sure, the Mexican cartels are exploiting our border right now. They're, they're trafficking drugs across the border every day, as we talked about. I think, in a general sense, we need to turn the border into an asset, into a choke point as it, as it pertains to the, the, the transportation of fentanyl. And it takes, like I said before, a network to defeat a network. So we need to understand who, how it's getting across, how they're bringing it across, and be able to ha effectively increase interdiction at the border. Do you think the administration's doing enough with its current sanctions authority to target the Chinese entities that profit off the sale of fentanyl precursors? So as I mentioned before in terms of sanctions, I think sanctions offers a real opportunity in terms of offensive strategies against the ch chemical precursors and, and, and the Chinese entities we need to target. You need to move from six to nine months in an indictment to, to sanction someone to more like four to six weeks, and you need to dramatically increase in scale in terms of the numbers of sanctions that you put out. Jelly Roll, in terms of, uh, of cartels operating around the United States, what are your thoughts there and what, what role they're playing right now to get the fentanyl distributed? You know, it's funny. I've had a complete change in life. I used to side with the criminals, but these days I side with the law. 
and I believe that it's uh, imperative that we do something about it. The, uh, the story of the cartel sending drugs to America is a tale as old as time. It's just not as deadly as it is right now, because to your point, people aren't overdosing because they're doing too much. People are overdosing because they're doing a little. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 